As I mentioned in an earlier video, um, I'm doing my PCBs uh, now, home, homegrown PCBs with the UV resist method. I thought it might, might be of interest to uh, uh, walk through at least the method that uh, I'm using here. And uh, here's an example of a board I've produced with the, uh, uh, with the method. And as you can see, it is, uh, it is actually double-sided, although it's, uh, the board's getting a little bit uh, tarnished these days. Um, now, note that the, there are through holes here, but uh, um, you can't do vias, obviously, with this process. If you need a via, you have to sort of drill a hole and then connect a bit of a resistor wire between the top and the bottom. So let's uh, start with the, uh, the materials that you need for this. Uh, and obviously to start with, you need, a, uh, copper, you need a supply of copper clad boards. There's nothing special about these. These are four inches by six inches board. And I'll, I'll provide a link to this and all the other materials I go through uh, today. Um, also you need, of course, uh, a software that you're gonna design your PCBs with. Uh, I use KiCad uh, because it's free and uh, you know, you can't argue with free. Uh, I, I've, I actually started with Eagle, but uh, unfortunately they, uh, uh, they charge for that now. Uh, the, the other good thing about KiCad is there's no sort of cloud component to it. It runs all on your, uh, uh, all on your computer. Here's some other stuff that you need to complete this. And let me zoom out a little bit so you can see this. Uh, this is a uh, UV floodlight. Let me get that light out of the way. <laughs> So this is a UV floodlight. Uh, I picked this up on uh, Amazon. I think uh, I got a pair for uh, about 34 bucks. Um, just moving on, uh, obviously this is a UV re resist dry film. Um, it actually comes with two pieces of backing paper, one on this side and one on the other side. Uh, and as you apply it, you need to peel the appropriate size off and side off. And I'll, I'll go through how you go about doing that. One of the other things you need is, uh, is some form of laminator, like uh, this laminator you can see here. Uh, and, and this is actually uh, the most painful part of the process, which is getting the dry film UV resist uh, onto the copper clad board. Now, you can short circuit that completely if you have uh, already purchased um, copper clad boards with the dry film uh, applied to it but they're pretty expensive. Uh, I think you're looking at, for, for a 6x4 copper clad board with UV resist already on it, it's, it's at least 7 or $8, which makes it, uh, in, at least in my mind, pretty expensive. Chemicals you need. Um, this uh, on the right-hand side is uh, washing soda, uh, uh, sodium carbonate. This stuff's not too bad. You obviously don't want to get it in your eyes or on your hands. This stuff, unfortunately, uh, which is sodium hydroxide, also known as lye, is nasty, nasty stuff. Uh, if you get this in your eyes, there's a, a good chance you'll, you'll go blind. Uh, you'll certainly suffer some serious damage. So when operating with either of these, you definitely want to wear gloves and uh, protective goggles. The okay, next thing you need is uh, transparency film, and this is what you print the uh, the negatives on as part of the UV resist process. Now, note, and it says it right here, you uh, do need a, a laser printer for this. Uh, inkjet printers will not work on this. Uh, it'll just basically run everywhere and create an incredible mess. So you do have to have a laser printer for this. Now, you can get transparency films for inkjet printers, uh, but... I tried that, uh, they just do not work. So I wouldn't even go there. Um, the other thing is the transparency films for inkjet printers are incredibly expensive. They're like about a, a buck a sheet. Whereas this stuff, uh, I think this was $18 for a hundred sheets. So, uh, so you definitely need a laser printer. Okay, so here's the laser printer that I use uh, and it's a Brother HLL2300D. Uh, I thought I picked this up for around about 70 bucks, but uh, I just checked Amazon, they're around about 120 now, so uh, I guess they've gone up a bit in price. Um, and uh, you, can, uh, you can either pick the um, Brother, the genuine toner cartridges, or you can get the, uh, uh, you know, you can get clones uh, for pretty cheaply. I've found that the uh, real toner cartridges pr produce a much darker image, which is certainly what you need for, for this process. As far as the etching side of things go, uh, you do need to have an etchant, and this is uh, ferric chloride solution with uh, 
Uh, also, it's got uh, uh, hydrochloric acid in it, so that is super nasty stuff. Um, you don't want to get that in your hands and eyes either, so definitely gloves and eye protection there. And behind that, you can see the little bath that I use for, um, and I'll include a link for this. Uh, you don't have to go to this to this extent, but this the little bath behind there bubbles uh, uh, air through the, through the mixture, which uh, greatly uh, speeds up the etching process. The process itself uh, is pretty straight, straightforward conceptually, if not in practice. You basically create the dry, you take the dry film UV resist, you apply it to your uh, your copper clad PCB board with a uh, with a, a laminator, which I'll show you. And then you uh, basically take your negative and you shine UV light through it. And what will happen is that will leave an area of exposed UV uh, dry film resist and non-exposed. And then what happens is that you put that in a, a sodium carbonate bath and it washes away all the non-exposed areas. So everything that remains uh, hardens and then it's resistant to the ferric chloride solution. So basically that's the process in a nutshell. Uh, I'll walk through uh, each of the steps that I do uh, from KiCad all the way to etching and uh, we'll produce uh, some boards. Uh, in this case these will be double-sided although they'll be very simple uh, double-sided boards with just some holes on one side and a and a place for uh, I'm actually going to do this with the PCM 3060 um, PCM 3060 audio codec because uh, I wanted to do that anyway. So anyway, let's move on uh, now to the first step in the process, which is uh, preparing your uh, PCB um, uh, diagram in KiCad. Okay, so the first step in the process is to produce the transparency. Now the transparency is a negative in that where you want the copper remaining needs to be transparent. Um, as that is where the UV light will harden the resist. So to produce a negative, uh, I'm in KiCad right here, and I've already produced a little uh, sort of a panel of these uh, PCM3060 boards that I uh, prepared earlier. Um, and the thing you want to do is you can't actually print the transparency. You basically, uh, because the print function in KiCad at least doesn't allow you to produce a negative. So you have to use the plot function. Uh, just a, a few quick notes though, I have had troubles with scaling of the uh, of the plotted images. So what I do is I make sure that I've got the uh, page settings uh, set up for US letter, uh, at least that's, uh, that's over here in the US. Um, and then you go into the plot menu and what you want to do is you want to plot the front copper and plot and then separately plot the uh, back copper and uh, here's the settings that you want to that you want to have so really the only the only two uh, settings that we have is negative plot and check zone fills before plotting uh, and just a quick note you don't have to worry about mirrored plot for any of this um, you know basically if the transparency is the wrong wrong way around you can just simply turn it over. So let's go ahead and do that. We'll do a plot for the front copper and then separately a plot for the reverse copper and now let's have a look, quick look at the output. So let's go to the directory where they were put uh, and that is in GitHub in my PCM3060 and let's go into a list view and so you can see here it produced two images, a one for the f uh, back and one for the front. Let's just open that up and have a quick look at it. So there's the, uh, there's the uh, plotted image right there. You can see that's for the front copper. We've got a similar one for the back copper. Now it's a simple matter of printing those off on the laser printer. So let's go ahead and do that. Um, now to do that, um, obviously <laughs> you hit print, uh, but one of the things that you do want to make make sure also is that in uh, obviously this will be this will vary from operating system to operating system but you want to make sure that it doesn't attempt to do any page scaling uh, if you uh, you know if you don't uh, click none at least here on this print menu and there's similar uh, uh, the similar options in Windows and elsewhere 
uh, it will attempt to scale the image and the image that you'll get will uh, will not accurately match the uh, the footprints of the components that you want to put on there. So the other thing to note is that you actually want to print two copies of the front, two copies of the back. Um, unfortunately, a single copy uh, still transmits enough of the UV light to get a, a sort of a fuzzy image on the uh, on the output. So you'd basically you'll print two copies of the front, print two copies of the back, and then uh, um, and then you basically put them together. So so let's print this, and then we'll come back and have a look at the generated transparencies. Okay, so here's the uh, resulting transparency prints, and uh, let me just zoom in a little bit so you can see that a little better. So as you can see, it's transparent where the copper needs to go. Uh, so all good there. And I've got two copies of the front, two copies of the back. Um, now, really the next step is to um, align those copies and make sure that they're, they're stuck down well. Um, if you don't align the, uh, the images, again, you get uh, sort of a fuzzy, uh, fuzzy output, which is no good. So you've got to align front, the, the two copies of the front, you've got to align the two copies of the back, and then you want to create a little packet that basically aligns the front and the back. Um, and it's in that little packet that you'll put the, uh, you'll put the, uh, the, the copper, uh, the copper clad board in. Um, and then you're uh, kind of ready to go, but uh, we're not quite ready to go yet. Um, the next step I want to show is the uh, laminating process. So here's the uh, two copies of the images uh, aligned, front, uh, the front image and the back image. Let me just uh, zoom into that so you can see that. And you can see they are indeed uh, uh, closely aligned there. It's pretty easy to do with the uh, transparencies. So now what we need to do is uh, create a little packet that has in the correct orientation the front and the back image aligned and then we put the, the copper board in the sandwich between those two. So anyway, let us uh, let me get that little packet made up and then we can uh, move on to the laminating step. Okay, so here's the uh, top and bottom. And as you can see, they're uh, pretty much perfectly aligned there. Uh, you've got to press down to make sure. Sorry, my hand's causing focus issues. And so now uh, the, uh, the, car, the uh, copper clad board fits nicely in there. And you can pretty well guarantee that um, there's going to be a little bit of offset created by the fact that copper board's in there. But if you've got a thin enough copper board, the offset created is... Is fairly small. Um, so now we're ready to move on to uh, uh, the next step. So let's just uh, let's just bring the tool in and uh, we'll have a look at that. So here's the tool and it's an old picture frame with a piece of glass here and another piece of glass here. And the purpose of this is to make sure that the transparency is pressed as close to the glass as, as possible. Um, so what uh, can happen is if it's lifted a little, a little bit, again, you will get an, an, an out of focus picture um, during the UV uh, process. So got a piece of glass on the bottom, piece of glass on the top. Uh, they're fairly inflexible. Uh, and so it produces a nice, uh, a, a nice uh, close to the, to the board fit. And then I just sort of push these little tabs down here uh, you can get these picture frames anywhere and they're cheap as chips so uh, so anyway i'm um, going to move on to the uh, i'm finally going to move on to the lamin laminating process now okay so the first step is to uh, cut out a, uh, a piece of the uh, uv resist paper that's uh, that covers is enough to cover both front and back um, now on this UV resist paper, as you can see, I've got the uh, got the garage door open here, and uh, the, the good thing is you don't have to worry too much about uh, uh, this getting exposed. In direct sunlight, it'll happen pretty quickly, uh, but out of direct sunlight, uh, you, you've got quite a bit of time to work with it. Okay, so now we've got to remove the uh, protective backing on one side, and for that, I usually use a piece of sticky paper, sticky tape. Sorry. 
get it in the corner make sure I'm on camera while I do this and then sometimes it takes a little bit of coaxing to come off as it is doing right now there we go it's coming off now like I said this is the most painful part of the whole process That's got it. So you got to pull that off, and this will always stick to your fingers. So you got to make sure now. This is the side that I just pulled it off. So this is the side that I want down. So let me put that down like that, and then back over. So that's going to cover both sides well enough um, for the purposes of this. Okay, so I've got the laminator at uh, pretty much the lowest setting possible. Let's uh, get that in there. And we'll see what we see. And you can see, unfortunately, there are wrinkles in the, in the paper. And as we see the result come through there, we'll probably see some... Uh, probably see some wrinkles, unfortunately. Anyway, we'll come back when it's through the laminator. Okay, so here's the byproduct through the laminator here, and you can see I've got one side's pretty good. The other side's got a few wrinkles on it. And the problem with the wrinkles is ev everywhere there's a wrinkle, there's going to be a little break in the, uh, in the circuit. So this will be the side that's uh, kind of the, the bottom of it. Um, uh, but anyway, uh, this is ready to move on to the next step. I wish I could do them all like that. Wow. Alrighty. Okay, so we're ready for the exposure uh, phase of the process here. So taking this board that uh, I had prepared earlier, it wasn't the exact same board, and I'll pick the most wrinkle-free side of it for the, for the uh, detail here. So there we go. It's nice and aligned on the board. And I forgot to mention, that's the other reason that... Uh, this uh, picture frame comes in handy is um, as you turn over the board to expose the other side you want to be super careful not to um, not to move the board at all because otherwise you'll get a misalignment between the top and the bottom which obviously would not be good so pressing down tightly I'll put the tabs on Okay, all the tabs are on. Now we're ready to move on to the exposure phase. So for the exposure phase, I'm going to simply plug in the uh, UV light. You can see that uh, going right now. And uh, what I usually do, uh, at least for this light, is uh, between 45 and uh, 45 seconds and a minute on each side. So. Uh, I will come back when uh, 45 seconds, uh, 50 seconds has elapsed. Okay, 55 seconds is about up. Let me unplug. And then I'll uh, turn this over. Being super careful not to move the board around. That would be a catastrophe. And then I'll turn this on again. And we'll come back in another uh, 50 seconds. Okay, so we're up and uh, we've exposed that. So we can move this out the way. Now, um, once it's exposed, let me let me get it out so we can uh, so we can have a look at it. Make sure it's still in camera. Yes, we are. So basically, what you should see when it's exposed is that the uh, UV resist has turned a much darker blue. So let's uh, open this up. Get the. Uh, sorry, I'm all thumbs this morning. So if we have a look at the exposed surface, you can see that the. Oh, get the light off it. There is a nice uh, deep blue area where the UV has been. Um, where the UV has uh, basically hardened 
the, the compound. Now at this stage you want to avoid any further exposure. So I usually kind of wrap it up in a cloth um, as we prepare the next stage, which is the uh, sodium carbonate bath. Now what we have to do on each of the sides is remember that protective covering is on both of those sides. So we first have to remove that. You can use a piece of uh, sticky tape as before, or you can just peel it off if you're lucky enough to have a little bit uh, of the sheet. So that's the one side peeled off, and uh, I'll do the same on the other side and come back. Okay, so I have the protective cover removed from both sides. It's uh, time to prepare the uh, sodium carbonate bath. Okay, so uh, now we prepare the um, sodium carbonate bath, and the purpose of the sodium carbonate bath is to remove the undeveloped UV resist compound, and that basically le leaves the uh, developed uh, UV compound, uh, which is hard and resists the etchant for the later on step. So there's not much uh, science here. Uh, I basically uh, put in a bit of the uh, sodium carbonate, uh, it dissolves readily in water. And what I've found effective is that you have warm water. Um, that seems to be the best. Um, that seems to be the best. So what you basically do is mix in a, a bunch of the stuff, stir it around a bit, and then we can just drop in the uh, drop in the circuit board that we prepared earlier. Now you want to leave it. Uh, Probably a minute or a couple of minutes in in the bath, and uh, so we'll come back uh, when the uh, sodium carbonate start, started to do its job. So we're about a, a couple of minutes uh, into the process, and maybe you won't be able to see this, but if I rub gently on the outline, you can start to see the um, undeveloped resist moving away. Now, you do have to be fairly gentle here, particularly on the thin lines, because you can accidentally... Um, can accidentally wipe them away so anyway we'll give it a few more a minute or so more and then come back okay so we're back again just to show progress probably about a minute since the last time and you can really see that the uh, sodium carbonates doing its job they're removing the uh, uh, removing the uh, under undeveloped uh, resist so we'll keep it in there uh, probably a minute or so longer okay so here's the uh, kind of the uh, developed product there and you can see I've got uh, some nice clean lines there um, some of them are a little fuzzy if you have a look at that one in the middle you can see there's some uh, like a fuzzy outline and uh, you know that can be caused by a variety of reasons it could be the plates uh, not quite tightly affixed to the surface but for the most part I think we've got uh, a pretty good print there you know and on the back it's uh, it's pretty good also um, so I've rinsed this off, although I don't think you really need to do that. Um, and basically this board now is ready to go in the uh, the etchant bath. So let's uh, move on to that now. So one note, once you've reached this point, um, the, uh, the compound on the board is pretty robust. Now I wouldn't leave it hanging around for, for any length of time, but you don't have to worry about keeping it out of sunlight or anything like that for now. It's... Uh, it's pretty much good to go. So anyway, uh, I'm going to drill a hole in this so I can uh, uh, lower it into the bath and uh, then we'll uh, have a look at that. So anyway, apologies, I couldn't uh, film the lowering into the bath. Uh, I needed both hands. So as you can see, the bath is going. Uh, that little uh, air bubbler on the right hand side is, uh, is bubbling air into that. Uh, there's also a heating element on this too. Uh, both of those uh, uh, greatly improve the sort of uh, reliability and the quickness of the process. So anyway, this will take about five to ten minutes. It very much varies on the temperature of the etchant and uh, uh, a few other things too. So we'll come back when uh, we've got some results. Okay, so here's the uh, board after the etching process. And as you can see, it seems to have done a pretty good job. Um, there appears to be no copper between those tracks there. But I think the best way is to uh, get this under the microscope and uh, have a look at uh, the actual uh, output. All right, so here's the, uh, the board under the microscope. And as you can see, we've got 
a little, a little bit a little bit of sort of blurred edges there now obviously this um is still with the um the uv protect on there which i'll get to removing that shortly but you can see that the uh, uh it's a pretty good result there uh given how small these traces really are so and i believe these are 0.2 millimeter traces something like that um so um how you remove the uh, the blue stuff is uh, this is where the nasty part comes in. This is what you use the sodium hydroxide for. So uh, I'll get that bath all set up. Okay, so I have my gloves and my goggles on. Let's get some of the uh, sodium hydroxide in there. This is just, again, it's not a science. Get that dissolved. Make sure the lid's on that. And then we uh, simply take the board and put it in there. And uh, make sure it's uh, fully dissolved. Now I've got uh, sodium hydroxide all over my gloves, so uh, let me go and get rid of that and uh, we'll leave this in there for a couple of minutes and uh, we will come back. So as you can see, the uh, sodium hydroxide solution has completely removed all the UV resist, as we expected. Hmm, except for that little bit there, it's not coming off for some reason. Must be something on the... Uh, Something on the board there. Interesting. It's come off everywhere else though. So let me get this rinsed off and uh, then we'll come back and uh, have a look, another look under the microscope. Well, I always feel somewhat relieved when the uh, sodium hydroxide bath business is over. So as you can see, the board turned out pretty good. Um, I mean, just with the uh, naked eye, you can spot some little... Uh, little glitches here where the uh, there's some traces that have connections uh, going between them uh, so there's there's a couple on this one i think there's one over here yeah, there's a little one there uh let's get it under the microscope anyway and you can see uh, you can see that for yourself okay so here's the board uh, under the microscopes just so you can see uh, for yourself the um sort of the quality of the traces so this is the far uh the top left one here which was one of the better ones and as you can see there's a clear separation of the uh of the traces there i checked with um, a multimeter there's no continuity between any of these traces but uh, you, you can see there are some uh, little glitches on the board let me just see if i can find one oh, there's one over here somewhere uh, bear with me i'll get there sooner or later um where is it again Oh, there it is up there. So there's a little glitch in the board right here. Bear with me. Uh, it's hard to find a glitch now. So it's, uh, where was that little glitch? Um, oh, there, there, there we are right there. You can see there's some bridging between those two traces there. Um, and I believe there was a bridge down here somewhere. I'm not seeing it now. Uh, but anyway, um, th this process obviously isn't perfect and you can get bridging between these traces. And, you know, the larger the board you have, the, the worse it gets. Um, so anyway, I'm pretty happy with, uh, with the outcome here. I, I think it, uh, I hope you enjoyed uh, this video. Um, I did actually hold this up to the light and I did confirm, you know, just to, for purposes of reference, I've got a ballpoint pen here. I did confirm that the holes exactly line up front and back, so uh, the little packet method did indeed uh, did indeed produce good results. Um, I hope you enjoyed this. Uh, what I'm going to use these uh, these boards for is a bit of playing around with the PCM3060 uh, audio codec, uh, so that'll be coming up uh, shortly. Anyway, hope you enjoyed this. That's all for now.